doors were barred, all the windows fastened down. Spent the night in sleeplessness, rose at every sound. Half in hopeless sorrow, half in fear of the day. Find the soldiers breaking through, drag us all away. Just before the sunrise, heard something at the wall. The gate began to rattle, and a voice began to call. I hurried to the window, looked down into the street, expecting swords and torches and the sound of soldiers' feet. There was no one there but Mary. I went down to let her in. John stood there beside me. She told us where she'd been. She said they'd move him in the night, and none of us knows where. The stone's been rolled away, and his body isn't there. Both ran toward the garden, and then John ran on ahead. Found the stone in the empty tomb Just the way that Mary said But the winding sheet that wrapped him in Was just an empty shell And our word that taken him Is more than I could tell Something strange had happened there But what I did not know John believed the miracle I just turned to go Circumstance and speculation couldn't lift me very high. I'd seen them crucify him, then I saw him die. Back inside the house again, all the guilt and anguish came. Everything I'd promised him just added to my shame. But at last it came to choices. I did not, I knew his name. And even if he was alive, it wouldn't be the same. Suddenly the air was filled with a strange, sweet perfume. Light that came from everywhere drove shadows from the room. Jesus stood before me with his arms held open wide. I fell down on my knees, just clung to him and cried. He raised me to my feet as I looked into his eyes. Love was shining out from him like sunlight from the sky. Guilt in my confusion disappeared in sweet relief. And every fear I'd ever had just melted into tears. somebody hey. amen 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 y'all need to give them an applause <laughs> amen Woo. he's alive hallelujah Woo. i got a
whole nother sermon. No. <laughs> Jesus. You know, a lot of times, though, we're excited. He's alive. Amen. Amen. But one, one of this uh, lyrics, you said to Peter, you know, uh, what does that mean? If he's alive, man, all of a sudden, you, sometimes you can feel your shame weigh you down. Amen? Amen. Sometimes the guilt is just starting to weigh you down. If he's alive, that means, oh, my goodness, I'm, I am accountable for what I've just done. I've denied you, Jesus. And so when you sang that verse, man, it just pierced my heart. It pierced my heart. A lot of times we want to come to God because we feel like we're going to be judged, amen? Sometimes we don't come to God because we feel the weight of the condemnation of our own sin upon our own heads, amen? And we're worried. We don't even want to thank God that he's alive because that means that I'm guilty. I'm going to be judged of my sins. I don't want that. That's a lot of times the world doesn't want Jesus to be alive because then it means that their sins have to be dealt with. Amen? And it's not pretty. When I, before I got saved, I didn't want to deal with my own sins, let alone God deal with my sins. So we're going to pray, and then I'm going to tell you why it's so important that he is alive. Would you like to know? So let's pray. Father, I thank you. Thank you so much that you brought Jesus back. Jesus, thank you so much that you did die on the cross for every single sin of every single man, woman, and child in this room and through all eternity. Jesus, if there's somebody in this room right now that is weighed down by their sin, the sin that they've committed in this life, I pray that you give them hope that all of that sin had been put on him he said, it is finished. It has been paid for by my blood. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. If you will, turn your Bibles to Romans 4. Why is it so important today that we're proclaiming that Jesus Christ came back from the dead? Why is that such a big deal? Okay, we got a new life. Amen? Amen. We got eternal life. But why is it so significant that Jesus Christ had to come back from the dead? Look at this, Romans 4.25. It says that Jesus was delivered for our offenses and he was raised again for our justification. Okay, what does that mean, preacher? Look at this. Who was delivered, he was handed over, he was betrayed for your false step, for your trespass, for your sin. Jesus Christ went on the cross for every single sin that you've ever committed. Think about your sin for a second. All the stuff that you've ever done in your life. Think about how bad you've been in your life. Every single bad thing you've ever done, every single offense you've ever done in your life was put on Jesus Christ on the cross. He literally became sin for us. Amen? Amen. And he died on your behalf because you should have died. But you know what? He took your place. Do you believe that? And then it says that he was raised again to waken, to arouse, to raise up for our justification. He was raised from the dead. Look at this. To pronounce us righteous. We have gotten our acquittal. Amen? Amen? You know, anyone that's gone to jail or been before the judge, and he gives a sentence, doesn't he? You're guilty. You have to die for your sin. Carl, all of that stuff, death, 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 death. But Jesus Christ put that upon himself to die in your place today. That is the good news of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And it says that he was raised again to pronounce you righteous. For our justification. Now what's this? Now you think for a second he was raised for our justification. But look at this. This for in the Greek means through, on account of, or because of. So literally Jesus Christ was delivered because of your offenses. Because you are sinful, Jesus Christ came to die on the cross for your sins. Amen? 
But look at this. This also means that Jesus Christ, because of our justification, was raised to life. What does that mean? Justification. It means that you now are declared righteous. You now have received your acquittal. You no longer are guilty of your sins. Some of y'all didn't hear me. (laughs) Jesus Christ could not come back from the dead if any of your sins had not been paid for. Well, preacher, you don't know what I've done. Let me tell you, that sin was on Jesus, and he paid in full for it. In in your bulletin, you have a receipt. Amen? Amen? Jesus Christ's resurrection is literally the receipt that we have to prove that I have been been made righteous. I have now been acquitted. I have now received forgiveness of sins. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is our divine receipt that you have been forgiven of all of your sin. Hallelujah. I don't know, preacher. I still feel pretty bad about myself. Just because Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, just because Jesus Christ literally was raised to life because you had been forgiven, you still have to receive it. Amen? You ever gotten a Christmas present? And you get a Christmas present, and in the Christmas present, there's the gift return receipt. Right? It means it has been purchased. It wasn't stolen. (laughs) It had been purchased on your behalf. Here is your divine receipt. But if you don't receive the gift, come on, y'all. If you don't receive the gift, they paid for it in vain. Jesus Christ literally died on the cross for every single last sin that you've ever committed in your life. And if you don't receive him, if you don't receive that free gift, literally it's like he died in vain. But he still paid for it. So today, if you walk out of this room without receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, if you don't literally take the free gift of eternal life, that he died in your place for the forgiveness of all of your sins, he still died for you. It just doesn't mean you took it. You, you didn't take it. That's crazy, isn't it? Okay, preacher, so how do I receive this? Look at 2 Corinthians 5.21. It says, for he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. We might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Now, that's not meaning that you're a God, amen? Amen? It means that in Christ we are made righteous. Hallelujah? That means, folks, there isn't one single sin. He literally, Jesus, became sin. Think of the worst evil sin you've ever done in your life. Think of the worst darkness you've ever experienced in your life. Been done to you or you've done to somebody else. Jesus Christ literally became that darkness on our behalf to give us eternal life. Y'all believe that this morning? Look what the Bible says here. In Romans 4, in order to understand this a little bit deeper, we've got to go back a little bit. So if you turn your Bibles to Romans 4, go back a few paragraphs here. Who against hope believed in hope. Now, you know our theme of the year this year at Mercer Baptist Church is hope. Amen? Amen. Now, if you don't have a church home, we'd love for you to come back. Amen? Amen. Our theme of the year that we feel like we're going through is the idea of hope. What does hope mean? We knew that we studied it already. Hope means rope. Literally, in the Hebrew, it means tikvah. It means a rope. God's throwing you a hope rope. Amen? It's hope. Also, hope is an expectation of good. God wants you to know that he is good. Amen? Amen. And we need to have an expectation that God has good for us. Now, this scripture right here is actually talking about Abraham. You know, Abraham, when he was very, very old, God had promised him a child. Now, he's old. And God promised him a child. And look at this. It says, who against hope believed in hope. Now, we think, now, that doesn't make any sense. It's a double negative, right? But literally, this against actually is not opposed, but it means beside. It introduces someone or something as very close beside or near. So literally, Abraham, near hope, trusted in the hope. (laughs) Y'all standing beside hope? Miss Joyce is. (laughs) 
<laughs> Abraham, he stood close to hope. He stood close to the expectation that God is good for him. Amen? And in trust, he hoped. Because he knew God was good. Y'all know God is good today? He literally died on the cross to forgive you of all your sins. How much more good does he have to be to show you he is good? I usually don't yell, but for some reason I'm just fired up this morning. Trusted in hope that he might become. You know, a lot of times we don't see it, do we? God gives us a promise and we don't see it. Brother, I don't feel righteous. I don't feel like I've been forgiven. I don't feel like I've, I've been given my acquittal. I, I know Jesus died on the cross for my sins, but I'm just not feeling it. You know, your salvation has got nothing to do with your feeling. Some days I feel like I'm a preacher, and then other days I don't feel like I am. Some days I feel like I'm a husband. Yesterday I had a laundry list of honeydews. I felt like a pastor to my family, amen? But even days I don't feel like I'm a husband I'm a husband. You know, whether you feel like it or not, Jesus Christ has paid for every single sin that you've ever committed, and his divine resurrection is a receipt for that, whether you feel like it or not. But he says that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thou seed be, and be not weak in faith. Oh, be not weak in trust. Last year, our theme of the year was trust. Faith is literally trust. He considered not his own body now dead when he was about 100 years old, neither yet the deadness of his wife's womb. So everything outwardly is pointing to the fact that it ain't going to happen. But he still stood near to the expectation that God was good and he was hanging on to it by trust. So even though the world and everything around you is telling you, you ain't good enough, you're condemned, you're horrible, you're wicked, you're awful, Jesus Christ says, my resurrection is your divine receipt that I have paid for every single sin. So when the devil comes around, he's like, Psh, Carl, you think you're saved. You might be thinking to yourself right now, I hate his bow tie. That's a sin. <laughs> but you know what? Jesus Christ is still alive, amen? And he died for that evil thought. Y'all know I don't always wear these, so you get a kick out of it if you see me all buffed up. Amen? <laughs> but every single past, present, and future sin, y'all, the church desperately needs to know the resurrection proves that he has paid the price. Amen. He staggered not at the promise of God. He staggered not at the promise of God. He staggered not at the promise of God. Folks, today you might not be saved, my words to you is don't stagger not at the promises of God. Don't waste your time. You've known for years that Jesus has died on the cross for your sins, but you've never truly trusted in him because your whole life you've been bombarded with this idea that you're not good enough. Outwardly, all of your actions are proving that as well. Even your family attests to that. Even your neighbors, they point fingers at you and say, you're no good, you're dirty, you're rotten. But folks, if you, if you understand that Jesus died on the cross for all of your sins, folks, he, he has paid the price for all of your sins. Don't make this stumble. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in trust, giving glory to God. Folks, when you do this, when you put all of your trust in Jesus, you will give glory to God because you know you've been forgiven. That's what the song says. I've been forgiven. You know why I love Jesus so much? Because I know I've been forgiven. Those that are forgiven much, love much. Those that are forgiven little, live little. And I love Jesus a lot. Because I've been forgiven a lot. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to also perform. Even though I'm an old man and even though my wife is barren, I just, pro I just know he's going to to give me good. I have a great anticipation and expectation that God has good for me. God, newsflash, God didn't make hell to put you in it. The Bible says it was made for the devils and his angels. Folks, I truly believe this, that hell itself was prepared for the devil and his angels. 
If it was not, if it was prepared for somehow the unelect, then he would have said, hell is prepared for the devils and the unelect. Hallelujah. That means that everyone, folks, Jesus Christ, for God so loved the whole world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. I believe the blood of Jesus that was spilled on Calvary, he literally became sin for the entire world, the whole civilization of humanity. Nobody is outside of that. Unless maybe you're a monkey. Newsflash, you're not a monkey. No, okay, never mind. I get it. And therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness. Folks, Jesus has died on the cross for your sins. If you will just trust that, it will be imputed to you for righteousness. Justification. It was on Abraham. This is even before Jesus died, but he was looking towards the cross. Now, it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. Folks, there's no reason to fear death any longer. There's no reason to be bothered and weighed down by your sin any longer. Just trust. Just trust. You know, I love Romans 10. If you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. If basically in your, in your heart you're just saying, okay, okay, I, I give up. I give up. I'm making Jesus the boss of my life. Amen? I'm making Jesus my Lord in my life. And you shall believe in his heart or trust in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. It is so important, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen? But I don't see Jesus. You should have been here this morning. Blessed are thou who have not seen but yet believe. Even though we can't tangibly, even though we can't tangibly see the resurrected Jesus yet, we have received the Holy Spirit that is already talking to your spirit, already talking to your soul. Hey, this is true. Believe this. Even Abraham, when he he everything was opposed to this was going to happen, this was going to be good for him. He still believed, hey man, God said it, I'm taking it to the bank. Take this to the bank, folks. Trust in Jesus. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You're saying that he has been resurrected because he has forgiven me of all my sins. I'm taking that divine receipt. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. So when the devil comes around and... He's like, Carl, man, you ain't saved. I'll be like, Jesus was raised again. Amen? He was raised for my justification. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him shall not be ashamed. Shall not be ashamed. I'm not ashamed of my sin anymore. He has removed it as far as the east is from the west from me. Now the devil goes, oh man, remember when you were three and you kicked your aunt in the shin because she was trying to kiss you? No, Jesus raised from the dead. He, he is going to continually try to tell us that we're not good enough, folks. He will continually tell us that you aren't saved. But when you receive it by faith, folks, take it to the bank. This is the whole reason why. Folks, if Jesus Christ wasn't raised from the dead, it means that your sin still has to be paid for. If your sin, if Jesus hadn't paid fully on the cross for your sin, it means that he couldn't come back from the dead. Amen? There ain't any sin that's holding him down, folks. The tomb is empty. We have to have a confident assurance of your salvation for the forgiveness that is found in Jesus Christ. Are you confident this morning that you're saved? Well, I I still, I'm not buying it yet, preacher. Look at this. It continues. It says, now, Jesus was raised for our justification. Now, here it says in Romans 5, 1 to 2, therefore being justified by trust. So when he was raised from the dead, he was divinely saying, 
all of mankind's sins have been forgiven. Now I'm making you the righteousness of God in me. Every single sin has been paid for. The wrath of God has fallen on me for every single sin. Hallelujah. But, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. When you trust in Jesus' death on the cross for your own sins, peace comes. No shame, peace. He wants to give you shalom. He wants to give you wholeness, completeness, fullness. He doesn't want you worried about it, folks. Now, if you're not saved, you got something to worry about. Because you are going to inevitably have to pay for your own sins. If you don't trust Jesus Christ for dying on the sins on the cross for your sins, then you have to die for your sins. And you will stay dead. Yes? Which he already he already paid for those sins on the cross, folks. What's holding you back from receiving him? What's holding you back? By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Now I don't have a month to preach this one sentence. This is powerful. By whom also we have access by our trust into this grace wherein we stand, folks. The only way we can even remotely think about standing in the presence of a holy God is in Christ Jesus. Because in our own sinfulness, if we stand before the presence of God, we'll just be casted away because we, we're just icky. We're tainted. We're not holy. He is holy. So the only way we can even enter into the presence of Almighty God is through the blood of the Lamb. Amen? So what do you think you have to do to make yourself righteous, folks? you got to repent of that. Repent of your self-righteousness. Repent of your effort. You've got to trust Jesus Christ. That's the gospel. That's the gospel. I'm still not buying it. Okay. Romans 5, 8 to 9. But God commendeth or stand together, referring to facts lining up with each other to support something. God's love towards us. Y'all believe God loves you? While you were still sinners, Christ died for you. Your, God's love for you doesn't change because you're a sinner. Did you hear that? God died for you, yet while we were sinners. Ain't no one that was alive when Jesus died in this room. Were you all alive when Jesus died? No. <laughs> we were already dead in our sins. We were, our generations weren't even thought of. Amen? But he died for every generation of mankind on this cross. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. It is so, it boggles my mind when Christians are worried about being punished for their sinfulness. Jesus took it on the cross. Jesus took it on the cross. Well, then you're giving people a license to sin. If you truly know what Jesus Christ went, for, went through for you on the cross, folks, it'll bring you to tears, it'll bring you to your knees, and that sin will not look good in the light of the grace of Jesus. If you truly, you know, I say, well, you, just, you start talking about grace and love, and then people are just going to want to go out and do whatever they want. They're going to do that anyway. That's what my daddy always used to say to my mom. Well, he's going to do whatever he's going to do anyway. Make good choices, boy. <laughs> but folks, listen. This is the empowerment of the true believer that Jesus Christ has died on the cross for all of my sins and his resurrection is my divine receipt. That I have been made right with him. That I don't owe him anymore. That the wrath of God that I deserve was poured out on Jesus. Even the sins that you're going to do this afternoon, even the sins that you're going to do tomorrow, and that realization should just bring you to a point when that sin comes your way, you're like, no, I'm good. You hear you want, no, Jesus is better. When we truly understand grace, oh my goodness, he will empower us to live holy lives, amen? 
all right. <laughs> Still not buying it. Look at this, Romans 5. For if, when we were enemies, were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more, say much more, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. It's like Paul just, he just knows that we won't get it. He just knows that we just won't catch it. He just continually has to repeat himself, you're forgiven. You're forgiven. For all of you that have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, for the forgiveness of all of your sins, that all the wrath of God that was supposed to come on you was on Jesus, say amen. amen. Say thank you for dying for all of my sins. Now, if you haven't said that, you haven't received the free gift of eternal life, and I pray that you would. I don't know. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the free gift for the judgment was by one to condemnation. But the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which received abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Christ Jesus. What is all of that stuff going on? How did sin enter the world? Adam. By one man's disobedience, by the sin of Adam, all the entire world has been condemned. Thank you, Adam. But how much more then is the blood of the righteous Savior that died on the cross for your sins? <laughs> Cover all of your sins. If the sin of one unrighteous man could condemn you to death, Oh, you think you're good. Well, just even being a man, you're condemned to death. I've never sinned. Well, I, maybe you're holy and maybe you're perfect, but by the time you die, you will sin. And probably of pride. <laughs> but folks, just being a human, we're condemned to death because of Adam and Eve's sin. So if the sin of Adam created death and condemnation for all of mankind, how much more the blood of Jesus can forgive all of mankind. Hallelujah. I love this. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification, righteousness, forgiveness of sins, acquittal of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Woo! All of mankind was condemned to death through one man, Adam. So through one man, Jesus Christ, whose blood is, whose blood is more powerful? If Adam, if his sin was powerful enough to condemn all of mankind, how much more powerful is the blood of Jesus to forgive you of all your sins? Hello? Jesus' blood was powerful enough to forgive you of all of your sins and all the sins of the entire world. And because he did that, because it could forgive, he was justified. Our sins were literally acquitted. Our sins were literally forgiven. We were made justified, and because we were made justified, he could come back from the grave. The resurrection declares Jesus has accomplished in his death what was flawlessly successful to purchase our justification. Y'all believe that? Our justification was completely secured. It would be unjust for Christ to stay dead Amen? If he hadn't died for all those sins. It would be unjust. It would be unjust. Let me see your receipt. Y'all got your receipt in your hands? Y'all got your receipts? I got mine. Jesus is alive. <laughs> now this is just a piece of paper. 
But folks, if you've never trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, the, the word is very clear. He, he's trying to give you hope. He has an expectation of good. He wants to forgive you of all your sins. This morning, will you just trust in him that he's paid for it? And quit trying to struggle on your own? Just come this morning and, and, and pray with me to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. To figure out how, you, you might not even know what all this means, but I'll lead you through it all. But if you're a Christian this morning, he's alive. And he is your divine receipt that all, every single one of your sins have been forgiven. You have been made and declared righteous and justified by his resurrection. That is your divine receipt. So whenever that old devil comes around to you, amen, and he starts enticing you, you can say, man, Jesus is alive. He is my redemption. He is my receipt. You're not going to heaven. Yes, I am. Jesus is alive. The tomb is still empty. That is the whole foundation of the gospel, y'all. If Jesus wasn't raised from the dead, there's no reason for us to be here. Because he would have been died, he would have died for a sin that he couldn't, couldn't forgive, couldn't have forgiven. But Jesus' resurrection declares us righteous. You're acquitted, you're forgiven, you're free. So with every eye closed, every head bowed. Don't stumble any longer. Allow Jesus Christ to purge you of that shame. Allow Jesus Christ to to give you peace, peace to know that you don't have to die on the cross for your own sins. Let me tell you, you already know your own sins. I don't have to go through a laundry list of things that prove that. You know your sins in your heart. Either Jesus died on the cross for your sins or you're going to have to die for that sin. So this morning, you just need to say the simple prayer in your heart. Say, Jesus, all this sin... I don't understand it, but this preacher is saying that you died for it. And so, Lord, I am just now trusting that you died for all my sins. Every single last one of them. I just, I make you my Lord. I make you the boss. I've been trying to do it. I just turn it over to you. And I trust that you've done this. So please, Lord, help me. Come into my heart. Come into my life. Please help me through this. I, I don't understand all this, but he says that you're alive which is my proof. I don't understand that, but please help me walk through this. Sinner, I, I say to you, you are no longer a sinner, but a saint. You have been forgiven. The resurrection of Jesus is your divine receipt. Christian, this morning, you've been beating yourself up. The devil's been beating you up that you're unforgivable. That you're still no good. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is your divine receipt. Hang on to the resurrection, for it is the power of the gospel. Just shake it now. Shake it in front of that devil and say, Jesus.